Hi, this is Tapcat. Welcome back to the Banner Saga 2. So we are hiding in a deep, dark cave to get away from the dredge. Looks like uh, we need to talk to the Valka. Zephyr, I believe her name is. So let's go ahead and do that. A few small fires provide a sense of calm for the caravan, though the villagers keep well away from the ravens. There's enough light to see you are no longer in a man-made mine, but a natural cave of sorts. What are we doing down here? Staying alive and keeping Bellower from the dredge. I thought that was obvious. Actually, so did I. But we keep heading down like we're hunting dwarves. The Valka gives you a ghost of a smile. Until today, no one but a few on the council knew about these tunnels. Not even menders. We didn't create them. But we have used them a great deal over the years to travel far distances quickly. Zephyr becomes quiet, awaiting a question. So where are we headed? Where would you go knowing you possess the sleeping body of the immortal Sunder General? Well, I don't really think dropping it in a river is good enough. If the dredge can actually sense where he is if they followed us by some instinct to where we were seems to me like they could recover it from a river even a very powerful one so i don't know what manahar is i'm guessing it's some kind of sea but i'll say that you want us to drag him to bloody manahar don't you manahar is the safest place to secure bellower's body. Whatever drew the dredge army toward us in Bindal, the council can find a way to stop it. I see. So that's where the council is. Then I don't actually think that's the safest place. And what about my ravens? So far, helping Valka pays less than a bloodshed coin. And that's why I'm talking to you alone now. The corridor will lead us to Manahar in a week's time. See us there safely. And I give you a genuine Valka oath. You will be rewarded well enough to never need work again. You look around at the cave walls and back the way you came. We'll go to Manahar. We were heading there after the Blue River anyway. Hmm. I don't really trust Zephyr. And I don't necessarily mean that I think she's lying to us although that's possible, but I don't think she knows as much as she thinks she does. She's, I definitely believe she's wrong about Juno because she's just convinced, oh, Juno's dead. And I don't think Juno is dead, man. She looks pretty spry for a corpse. So we have a couple people who are injured. And by a couple, I mean four. One day would get us two of them back. I think I at least want to do that much. So let's do this. Okay, I better be careful. I don't know if we're going to have more combat or not. And at least this way, I've got uh, Bulwark back. I don't really care about the other guy. Some of our here, oops. Oh, I see. He says uh, people were injured and need to rest. Yeah, I know, buddy. In the light of torches, everyone is covered in soot and dirt. They smell bad, too. It comes as no surprise when the sound of running water excites the caravan. It has to be some underground river or something, a woman says, and all the villagers start moving in that direction. Yeah, uh, stop. Stop. Scouts will check it out. 
While those around you stop, but others push onward. Soon you hear small popping noises, then screams. All you see is bobbing torches until the villagers run back to the path. It killed them, a man yells. You grab him by the shoulder. Some kind of plant. Leaves made the noise like water, but it had thorns and grabbed them. He just, they just died. You know, I don't want to criticize the writing, but let me get this straight. There's a plant down in this cave where people basically never come. And it evolved to kill people, like to lure them with the sound of water and then kill them. Like, how would it even still be alive? This is terrible, Zephyr says, taking the deaths personally. We should stick to the paths as much as possible. Too much can go wrong down here. The faces of those passing you are frightened. Well, good. They could use a little fear. Just don't run off like a freaking idiot like that. And now, I, now we just run into some random guy. <laughs> All right, ditch. Um, hello. A man's sudden appearance makes you tense. Uh, fancy meeting you here. I didn't mean to sneak up on you. It's something I do. I mean, something I've learned to do. Something that will kill. Get, get, get. Oh my god. <laughs> ba, ba, ba. All right, let me try that again. Something that will get you killed if you do it to me again. Under. Okay, yes, understood. But it does have its uses. Just allow me to fight alongside you in a, well, a fight. You won't regret it. You scoff and turn away from the man, only to see Gudmunder approach. I see him at ditch. Strange fellow to have next to you in a fight, but he finds his way through enemy defenses. Then you fight next to him. People near me tend to get hurt. But his injuries won't be an accident. <laughs> uh, I kind of like Bulwark. He's not admirable. Don't get me wrong. He's a jackass, but he's funny. A scout rushes back to the caravan. There's gold down here. You feel the surge of excitement like everyone else. A vein as thick as my leg, just over, well, just around... The man looks left and right, confused. Damn it, I'm all turned around. <laughs> yeah, gold does us no good right now anyway. Maybe not for you, a scrawny man says. Not all of us got your reputation, though. Takes coin for certain things in town. Others agree, even as you move the caravan along. Later, others report some people missing. A lot of good the gold will do them down here, you say. But well, we've got a real brain trust with this in this group, man. Though torches highlight the craggy black rocks and puddles on the path underfoot, they do little to keep everyone together. Sharp turns around boulders quickly block lines of sight. You've lost a few families, Zephyr informs you. We need to stop and find them. Are you serious? I don't want to start shouting. And I don't think arguing with her is going to be productive. So I'll try and at least limit the number of times we're going to do this. I appreciate the help, she says, and splits everyone into search groups. As you search, you realize it's just as hard to track time down here as it is above with the sun that never moves. Sometime later, you think you hear voices to the left. Yeah, we'll search. As you move away from the main path, you leave someone with a torch standing every so often. 
This route proves useless, as it seems you must have heard nothing but an echo. You follow the line of torches back to the path. All right, I'm done. We'll return. Zephyr has returned with a few of the family. She sees that you found no one and shrugs. I appreciate your effort. I mean, hey, I did try. It's not like we blew it off. Water barrels are running low, Holfi, your quartermaster reports, and I'll be damned if I start licking these slimy rocks for a drink. Well, let me tell you something. There may come a time when that'll sound good to you. I don't know. The shield maiden looks at you. If these people start getting desperate for water down here, you cut her off. I know you say. Send out some scouts. We'll camp here until they return. Some of your ravens and other members of the caravan group up and grab torches, rope, and water skins before heading off in different directions. Better catch some rest while you can, Fulka says. Nothing to do until they get back anyway. Laying down, you focus on the sound of a small drip somewhere in the cave. It grows louder, like the beat of a drum, like thousands of feet marching behind you. You turn and everyone stops. You see the glowing eyes of your army looking at you in admiration. Is this a dream? A hundred members break formation to dig holes in the cavern floor and place stone bowls in the depressions. The bowls quickly fill with water and the first is offered to you. You slake your thirst before seeing your red armored reflection in the bowl. You wake up with a shout, and Folka joins you. What was it this time? she asked, concerned. I dreamt I was asunder. But let's try this. Let's try finding the water that way. Yeah, dig holes, you say. Put bowls down in them. See if they fill with water. She sets some ravens to follow your strange commands, and shortly after, you hear the whooping cheers of success. Celebration brings all the scouts back early. Well, let me tell you something. That's good news and bad news because that also means there's there's Sunder in this cave. They got past the cave in. So, yeah, that's a mixed bag. A rope bridge with wooden planking crosses an open span in the cavern formations. Looks old, Folka says. Narrow and not meant for carts. Mm. Yeah, let's try to reinforce it. Both Zephyr and Nichols move through the crowd and begin tracing patterns in the air with their staves. The only thing you see is a slight lift in the bridge, but they walk across at first to calm any fears. Caravan crosses without incident. I have a feeling that if you don't do something, like maybe having one cart at a time would be okay. Although I suspect you'd lose some supplies because of the amount of extra time. But you probably would get everybody across safe. But I bet you if you just send everybody over like normal, you, there, there would have been an accident. We would have lost people or supplies or both. Well, our morale is still good. I'm not going to camp unless I need to. I'd rather just get through this. Keep pushing forward. But we're coming to something, it looks like. I don't know what. Uh, it would be funny if there was a godstone down here. I've slept in caves like this for entire winters, but there's something about this place, something old, unfamiliar. I don't like it, but I don't like all these humans on the verge of panic either. Maybe these dwellings up ahead will calm them down. Hmm. I was just thinking, what if this is where the dredge came from originally? 
Because they talk about the dredge spilling out of the chasm in the ground or something like that. And um, the dredge know to dig holes down here and get water that way. Like, who would even think of that? You're in some big cavern and you go, hey, I know. <laughs> let's, let's dig a hole in the ground and we'll put a bowl in it. It'll just fill up. Anyway, Zephyr looks up at the giant shaped formation, glittering with strange glowing patterns. The Valken know almost nothing about this ancient race's culture, let alone their god, Theznan. The name alone might be wrong, but we have a framework of letters based on repeated patterns found around here. All right, well, that makes it sound like, in fact, it's not Dredge. It could be dwarves or something else. She wanders around the glowing pools of the Godstone. If we are correct, Vesnon was not their only god, but he became one of the most powerful at the cost of everything dear to him. She looks at you. Of course, if what you hold dear is something like control, maybe there's power in letting go. <laughs> Okay. Um, it's so funny. I, I just, that line. <laughs> it's like one of those, when somebody wants to sound inscrutable, you know. If you seek power, then the real power is to stop seeking, you know, that kind of crap. Just turn anything you say backwards and try to sound all wise. Uh, gems of various size and shape are found embedded in the surrounding stones. The clansmen are soon hammering away in an attempt to pry a particularly large gem loose. The ringing of hammers echoes through the deep. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this. Stop, you're making too much noise. Some look angry, but the fear of the unknown down here is enough to keep them from saying anything. They all move away, though a few look back longingly at the stone. Yeah, keep looking and don't touch. You think we're safe down? This isn't some kind of picnic, man. Okay, well, we definitely want to rest. And let me do that first. All right, so we got our morale back up, and that should also take care of our, uh, you know, our need to, to rest our injuries. I think everyone will be healthy now, and they are. So that's awesome. Let's go ahead and looks like we have a couple conversations. I don't think we're going to have any combat this time. We'll see, but this seems like it's going to be a traveling episode. Hopefully that's okay. The young mender stands tall and proud as you approach. Bulwark, I was thinking, well, wondering about what it takes to become a raven. <laughs> I've never heard stories about a test or trials to join. Is there a test? Why do you care? Aren't you Zephyr's lackey? Well, that's a little harsh. Well, apprentice, yes. I'm a full mender training to become a Valka. Part of our training requires world experience. Couldn't you work with a blacksmith or something? Eccles frowns at her. Huh. Would you kill someone for coin? Kill for... The mender's face pales a bit. I mean, I guess, if that was the job. Folka walks up and clamps a, clamps a hand on one of Nichols' now sagging shoulders. Most of what we do never makes it into the Scald songs. I guess I need to think on this a bit more. Let us know in Manahar. Nichols nods as you walk off. Yeah, I think he has a very romanticized vision, you know, of what it means to be a mercenary. And he doesn't realize that a lot of time you could be doing some pretty morally questionable stuff because someone's willing to pay you to do it. And, um, but I think the idea of just brushing him off is kind of stupid because, I mean, we've seen menders have real power and 
that's the kind of ability that nobody in the Ravens has. You know, you can always find somebody to swing a sword or an axe, but somebody who can do what he can, if he actually was was invested in being a Raven, would be amazing for them. Anyway, let's talk to this guy. The Spearman is standing alone, staring off into the depths of the caves. If you take off down one of these tunnels, we are not going after you. Back doesn't respond. He doesn't want to talk. I like him already. Do you know the worst part about it all? Never mind, I don't like him. I'm I'm going to say this. I want to ask what, but this is this is exactly what Bulwark would say, especially after what I just said. Folka gives you a look before <laughs> turning the back. Tell me the best part of it all first. The best part? It may all be over sooner than we think. You squint, not liking his words. That's not really what I meant, but go ahead. What's the worst part of everything? It's the silence. You give Folka a look. He hasn't slept near Ollie. That man makes all kinds of strange sounds. That's just noise. There's a silence from the loneliness. Folka inhales sharply. He's hit a sore spot. Maybe these tunnels and caves make it worse. There used to be days of talk. We used to laugh. Are you talking about your spear again? Back turns and stares at you with eyes of a man undecided on going mad. Lofen helps where she can, but no, there was another. Now there's an endless hole shaped like her, and if I don't keep filling it with work or drink... He walks away without finishing his thought. <sighs> Keep an eye on him. I'm the only one who gets to lose their mind and start killing. Exactly. He's not crazy. He's alone. Whoever she was, he still thinks she was the greatest. I'm jealous of her. It would be nice to have someone feel that way about me. You shake your head, snort, and walk away. Humans. Yeah, there would be a lot of people like back in this world, the way things are. Uh, so many people would have lost loved ones and you just wouldn't shrug that off and, you know, get over it right away. It would be very, very difficult. And then like you come down here into a cave. <laughs> I can't even begin to process what that would be like. Like... I don't know how many years it's been that the sun has never gone down. It's stuck in the sky where it is. And so that's what you've been living under. Wide open spaces, sunshine 24-7. And then you come down into this cave where there's no fresh air, no wind in your face or sun or anything. And you've lost all these people in your lives. Like, oh my God, I can't even imagine. All right, well, uh, let's check out the pools. This was a sacred sanctuary for those who built it, the Valka says, walking around the perfectly round, rippling pools. At least from what we've uncovered, the top pool was for reflecting on one's deeds, the middle to ask for strength from the world, and the bottom pool was for insight into one's future. She hesitates before saying, I've never done anything but study their inscriptions. Hmm. I'm going to ask for strength from the middle pool. Ignoring the peaceful setting of this ancient cave town, you stomp over to the middle pool, dipping both hands into the water. It turns blood red in your cupped hands, but it doesn't stop you from drinking deeply. 
Instantly, images of war flash through your mind. Swords hacking mail, arrows piercing leather, stone shattering. You open your eyes, panting. All three pools have gone dark. It feels as though you have fought and learned. Other ravens talk of similar feelings. A shared growth of understanding in battle. I should check on the others, you think. They may have learned something out of all this. Huh, wow, we actually got experience. Which is good, but it's slightly awkward considering how many <laughs> how many promotions I already have. I do have a fair amount of renown, though. So, literally everyone can go up now. That's kind of amazing, to be honest. I'm kind of thinking about giving Crummer another level. He's so darn good, man. Eh, I just noticed something. He's level six. I don't have any of those little pluses down here. Maybe that happens when you uh, promote him. Let's go ahead and do it. Well, let's see how much it costs. Fifteen. I'll do it. He's so good. All right. So not a lot I could do here. I could possibly, you know, do that. But let me, let me look here. Um, all right. So I didn't put any points into this before. I just, this is such crap. I don't want a 15% chance. I just feel like that's not good enough. Okay, let's do this. Let's max this out, because that was kind of my plan all along. Okay. And that's it. I thought there was two things here, but I guess there isn't. No, just the one. Huh. Maybe when I picked that one, it blocked off the other one. All right, and I tell you what, let's just make him an all-out beast in terms of strength. The other thing I was thinking about doing very seriously was giving him one more willpower. But I'm pretty sure he can level up at least once more after this. So, yeah, I could do it now if I wanted to. Cost 17. I'm not going to do that. I mean, he's level 7, and I got a bunch of level 3s in here, so... What's What about back? Is he worth promoting? What's his abilities? Pig sticker. Slaughter comes in low and attempts to skewer his target. Attacking with a 20% chance to deal a critical strike. Double damage attack. So if you, you know, level him up, that chance goes up a fair amount. That's actually pretty powerful, but he has to have an adjacent ally. And see, the thing is, I, once I start fighting, I don't usually have adjacent allies. He does have a spear, which makes it somewhat more viable. But it's not super easy during combat because of the way, like, I don't know how to describe it without being on a map. But usually you end up around an enemy. And uh, where one guy stands, somebody else isn't necessarily directly next to him. But I guess I could make it a point to do that for him. Let's try. Let's promote him, and I'll try to use him. He's cheap to promote, so let's give him some, you know, uh, ability to break armor and stay alive. So we'll do that. That was an easy one. And that gets me down to 29. That's enough for now. I'm actually almost out of time for this whole episode. So, uh, you know what? Maybe um, maybe it's not enough. Let's do this. Since I, I'm basically out of time anyway. Let's look at Gudmunder. Because if I remember right, he was pretty darn good. He's right. He's got stone wall. And I don't think I used it in the last battle, but I'm certainly willing to. Let's promote him. 
because we haven't had access to this since we lost Gil. And since that's kind of his thing, I think I just go all in on armor. Like, that's what makes this good, you know? The higher I push his resistance to be begin with, like, what did I just make it? 14? So now this means any damage up to 17 won't hit him. You know, they can have 17 strength. They can't get me. If I'm at rank 2, it's 19, which I think I might even be rank 3. So that would mean 7 on top of the 14. So they'd have to have 21 strength to hurt him if I'm using stone wall. That's crazy good. So, yeah, let's, um, well, I was going to say let's do that, but I already did. <laughs> All right. And uh, we got 20 Renown left. I think what I want to do is chill out for right now and see, you know, like the next combat. Who do I want to bring into it and would I want to promote any of them? What's this guy Ditch? What's his special ability? Track. So he can ignore a fair amount of armor. That's pretty good. And if he's level 4, I think he'll get rank 3 uh, with one more promotion. That's probably worth doing. All right. Well, I'll worry about that when we come back. I think uh, we'll go ahead and leave it here for now. This has uh, definitely been an interesting episode. We didn't have any combat, but to see this world down below and get some of the story stuff was pretty cool. So uh, when we get back, though, hopefully maybe we can get into a little bit of trouble. Well, that's all for now. Thanks for watching. I hope we see you next time.